Hi, everyone. My name is Lynette Davis with LynetteDavis.com, and I'm super excited to be joined here by my next guest of the Be The Change series, Miss Emily Wu Trump, and I'm going to let her introduce herself to you so you can learn more about her. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lynette, for having me. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Emily Wu Trong, and um, today I'm not wearing my green, um, but like my other hashtag is Lady in Green because the pink ribbon stands for breast cancer awareness, but not that many know that lime green stands for mental health. And so um, on days I just feel like being a fashion statement, I will wear like a lime green tutu, I'll put on a lime green wig, you know, just accessorizing green, green piece earrings and, you know, just have fun with it because too many people think that mental health is about what's wrong with you. But mental health really is also about what's right with you too. And so having grown up as a perfectionist, like I just felt like I concentrated way too much on what was wrong with me, what I was incapable of doing and, and anything that like I felt inadequate, you know, I would run away from. And, and so I just, I, I didn't know how to appreciate the progress that I had in my life and appreciate my talent. I, breakdown four years ago um what ended up happening was like i i came you know like talking I, I was talking to my own worst enemy inside my own mind and it was what ended up happening was i opened up my third grade diary and i was I, I, it was like I came face to face with my younger self and like, you know, me, my present day Emily started talking to interacting with my third grade Emily, you know, and she was just so impressed with the writing she saw in the third grade diary. And she said, well, your third, your handwriting is so, neat you were such an expressive little girl you know i'm i'm so sorry i i underestimated you criticized you made you feel not good about yourself and like you are such a smart girl you know I'm so sorry I called you stupid. I called you slow and but you were always worthy. And so it was learning how to embrace this little girl inside me who had it is carried around all this pain and just never feeling good enough and to trying to tell myself, you know what, now that you're so much older, you know, you didn't go through all those experiences in your life for nothing. I'm here with you now. I'm here with you now. And, you know, we're going to make the most of it. You know, don't beat yourself up for having, like, been mean to yourself before. When you know better, you do better. <laughs> my Angelo said, and, and just, I was so good at beating myself up, but, you know, I'm always learning to try to be a better best friend to myself, you know, like uh, applying the positive self-talk instead of the negative self-talk that I had all my life. So, so that's a little bit about myself, my story. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. You know what? It's so true. We, we beat ourselves up so much. And um, I love that you talked about just talking to that younger self because I'm a big proponent of inner child work. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. That's so powerful. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for sharing that with us. 
No, of course. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I am curious, based off of how far you've come to now, what in, in all of that transitioning and, you know, moving through all those difficult times and overcoming things, and, and of course, probably still overcoming different things. What mm -hmm. does the change mean to you? You know, somebody who has built all this resilience, what does BB mean mm -hmm. to you? Um, I think as a mover and shaker, being the change you want to see in the world is, you know, is you know taking a good hard look at yourself to being able to be a model to society because if you like for example if you want to promote love well you need to know love right if you want to know peace you have to be able to show that you have it and and help other people learn how to access it or find it or experience it for themselves. And, and so one of the reasons why I share my own personal story is because I want people to embrace their story, to find the resilience within themselves, to be able to know that, hey, there is no shame in being able, in telling your story. So many people live in that shame and embarrassment and, and are afraid to ask for help. Um, we live in a culture where, you know, in the Asian culture, we're taught to save face. In, in, in you know, boys, they're taught from an early age to man up, you know, don't be a sissy. Um, women are taught to be proper you know stay in your place you know and and it's just like all these societal expectations that are placed on us since we were kids but you know it's like hey if you want to change culture you have to start with yourself and when you learn to accept yourself and love yourself then even when you are imperfect you allow other people to embrace their imperfections as well and and accept being human you know and and that's how you know you defy the traditions of what society has taught us you know because trauma it gets passed down from generation to generation but if someone doesn't wake up then the, the, the trauma continues to be passed down and the, the habits and, you know, it just keeps on going. And, but once we wake up, it, it's kind of like our, we have to do something about it to, to change the culture, to make the world a safer place emotionally um, for others to know that you know that the world can be a better place and you know like for example like when i was talking about generational trauma like domestic violence gets passed down from generation to generation a kid may grow up with parents who are fighting at home think that's normal and then when they get have their own girlfriend or wife then if he starts beating up on her, then, but then finally, somehow finally realizes like, wait, this is wrong. I need to stop this. And the change will start with me. And then they can be that model for their own kids so that, you know, those habits get passed down from generation to generation. So, so that's where I'm just like, you know, I, I, that's where you have to be the change in order to help, help um, other people to learn to embrace um, their imperfections and to, to uh, pass on qualities and values that you want your children and the next generation to follow. So.
Yeah. I love that example. I, I love that you broke it down and gave like a very concrete example of how you can be the change starting within your own home and family and how that impacts, you know, you know, it starts with the home, well, individual and then the home and mm -hmm. you know, branches out to culture. I just, that's such a great example of how you, you know, from a micro level to a macro level. Great example. Thank you. <laughs> It's funny, I want to backtrack a little bit because you were talking about Lady Mary, how I actually found you. Well, I should say that's what was catchy to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I am interested in the work that you do, you know, based off of, well, you know, obviously Emily, <laughs> but mm -hmm. also, you know, where has Lady in Green taken you? You know, how has your advocacy work your Be The Change movement evolved? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, the first time I decided to share my story was at a, an Asian American legislative briefing on mental health. And when I went to the event, I was just so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a public event that's talking about like Asian American mental health. <laughs> like, how often does that ever happen? right because they're so hush hush right and when i discovered the event and at the end of the event like they asked okay who would like to come to the front and um, say a few words like based on your feelings about this event so i decided to go up and that's why i said and i said it with a lot of you know emotion nervousness and i said i will not end my life because i have a story to share the more we talk about mental health mental illness the more we will alleviate the stigma. There is no shame. There is no shame. And so, you know, I think even when I said that, I remember seeing one Asian lady crying in reaction to my comment, Aaron, and I, and it just I probably struck a chord with people because. I mean, I lived with that shame for a really long time, like different kinds of shame, you know. Um, you know, when your parents uh, tell you, like, well, what are you, after college, you, I moved back home, and my mom's like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, gives you so much anxiety to perform when you're just like, I just graduated, I don't have all the skills to be able to survive in this adult world, you know? And then like when you're, when you're, you know, your um, uh, cousins and your other friends that keep on moving on and they're going to get their masters or they're getting married or they're getting like, and you're just like, oh, you know, it's... <laughs> It 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 almost feels like you have to live in this, you know, competition, but but I think that like I was just I was a really scared person. I didn't know what to do with my life and I had different kinds of jobs and but then when I finally I think I backtracked, um, you know, it's just that so many people feel so lost i talk i was talking about shame you know but it's sometimes i think that our calling comes around when we discover that there's a gap there's something missing in your life i was always looking for a mentor and i realized that with all the experiences that i've had I could now be that mentor, that mentor for other kids who also felt lost after college or after high school or having like, you know, not having someone to talk to, confide in about your know, feelings, these kinds of feelings after um, when you're transitioning into adulthood and, and 
this was something that my parents couldn't do for me because they weren't emotionally available. They just kind of expected, you know, like, and just expecting you to perform without being able to show you how to do things, you know? It's like, uh, uh, and so, and so I knew that, you know, I was, I studied psychology and social behavior at UC Irvine and, and, you know, 10 years later, psychology is still relevant <laughs> in, in what I do now as a motivational speaker for mental health awareness and, and just being able to continue telling my story so that people know that they're not alone in their struggles and you know, finding out that I wasn't the only mental health advocate who was Asian, finding, realizing there were other Asians across the country who were speaking out and sharing their story and not leaving it to just hush hush. And, and it's almost like you, the uh, coming out with your own mental health diagnoses is almost like the LGBTQ process, coming out process, you know? And, and it can be very scary because you it's gonna affect like you people leaving you in your life if you disclose, if your parents will still love you, you know, it's and I but I said I'm going to do it for suicide prevention because I wanted to die by suicide before and, and I'm glad I didn't, you know, that I wouldn't be doing the moving and shaking that I've, I've been doing in the last four years, you know, and I think part of it is trying to spread the love, you know, when you discover that love for yourself, you know, then you're able to share that love with other people. One of the things that I learned from my sister having her first baby, because I'm the youngest of three, I never saw a baby, you know, grow up day by day from, you know, being in a womb to being born and, and grow being the toddler and when you know you just it, when you become a mother but I'm an auntie it's like you just you're just so amazed at how this baby learns by him or herself you know it's just like wow and then you just when you're holding it it's like wow you're so precious and then I realize that I never saw myself as that precious baby. And that's the way we have to, you know, treasure ourselves and, and love this little baby because that baby is us, <laughs> you know? And so um, over time, I just, I learned more about myself and I, I, I was getting involved. I just got involved with NAMI being able to share my story there and 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 it just felt so good because like I go out in the community share my story it inspires people I get to share my story with law enforcement I'm like how often does law enforcement want to hear your story you know so uh and then like last June, I got to speak to it uh, at a Kaiser National Health Quality Conference in front of like 500 healthcare professionals. So like, that was just awesome. You know, it's just like, because when I was younger, I thought nobody wanted to hear my story, but I'm like, wow. And like when more and more people ask me like, hey, I want to hear your story. And I'm just like, sometimes it, it kind of amazes me and is like, wow, you want to hear my story, you know? Because I had such low self-esteem for most of my life, you know? But, you know, I think that um, being able to have those experiences of depression and anxiety growing up have really 
helped me to become the motivational speaker I am today and, you know, try to tell people that, hey, you know, you can have a diagnosis, but you can still be able to turn your experiences and help someone else. You know, like the Carrie Fisher, she said, turn your broken heart and turn it into art. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. thank you let me ask you this because <laughs> as we were talking before we started recording I'm like oh my gosh it goes so fast uh -huh. it does. <laughs> especially when you get to hear the heart you know behind why somebody does what they do and feel their passion and just like really vibe because I'm sitting here like yes I get you <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What? Let me, let me phrase it this way. Because you said something really important. Um, you were talking about how when you were first speaking, it, was, it felt so rare to see other Asian Americans talking about mental health because of being somewhat taboo and within the Asian community. And I can relate to that because very, very similar to African-American culture. Um, we, we each have our own different things within our culture about what we can express, what we can't express and how we're able to come out. And mm -hmm. I know that there are different people who are watching this and they're going, that's so awesome that she had the courage to share her story. I'm not sure if I can do the same or why I should <laughs> share. My so I'm interested to know what do you think is the impact of you sharing your story? Mm. Um, I think the impact of me sharing my story is is to show vulnerability, to show humility, and to show the struggle of being human. Because so much of our society can be so fixated on putting on a show. <laughs> and making it look like that you have everything all together. <laughs> but people are far from it. And, and I think, you know, when I was talking about the transition from, from high school to college to adult life, it's, I think it also goes to show how like education doesn't always prepare you for life. It doesn't provide you with all the social skills, the coping skills to be able to know how to handle what comes after, afterwards and what, what the real world is like. And, you know, people think that in order to move up in the world, you need to get these degrees and if you get your PhD or wear a uniform you're seen as more respectable in society and 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 I I think that what I do by sharing my story and the lessons that I learned is make people think about their own relationship with themselves because when let let's say that you know like like i want people to examine their worth and and so like for example if you were to take away your degrees you take away your house you take away your car your looks your friends your family like all these external things that make you feel like a somebody. Like, are you somebody without all those external things? 
and most people feel like they're nothing, you know, big, or even the stop. Yeah, like if you lost your job, you got fired or got laid off, and don't feel like you can support your family. It's like you may have felt like your identity was so tied with those things that you forgot who you are inside, or you never realized who you were and and that's why it's like it's so important for us to develop this relationship with ourselves so that we as i keep on saying you know being your own best friend because as who are who are we with all the time ourselves we know ourselves best and when we develop that relationship with ourselves, you know, developing that self-validation. What is your self-talk? Is it negative? Is it positive? And, and being our own best ally. So, because if we are our own worst enemy, then we are more likely to, you know, we're we're closer to self sabotage, right? But if we if we do support ourselves, then we'll be rooting for ourselves. We'll tell ourselves, "Oh, you got it, you got it," you know. And so, I mean, this is just, and and I think it's really hard for people to look inwards, you know. But well, that's where being the change and that's where the revolution starts. And and um and so when when the tough when it gets tough in life, you know, that's where we just we have to find the support. We have to find the coping skills to hang on. And because you know, just because uh, like for example, I also go to Recovery International, the support group, and so we learn like, oh, replace the insecure thought with a secure thought. Okay, well, an example of that is, well, I may not always feel that good about my job, but uh, I got accepted into a Yale program, right? So it's just like, kind of just balancing the negative with the positive in your life, right? It's like, life won't be perfect. Life won't always go your way. And knowing that there are good things that are happening in your life. And then maybe the bad things that are happening in your life, that probably happens to everyone else too, though, right? It's like, yo, if you lose your wallet, uh, you... um. You misplace your car keys. You got in a car accident. Like, oh yeah, these are like such hassles. But it's like, but when you remind yourself, like, wait, like, why am I panicking? Like, this happens to everyone, you know. <laughs> like, and just trying to balance, have that balance of positive and negative, seeing the value in struggle. People, Iris Chang, they both died by suicide. Yes, it's very tragic, but yet they also inspired people. You know, and Robin Williams, like, he was so famous, but it made people talk, made people think about mental health, suicide mental illness, you know, and that's where I think that developing this, like, learning how to see the good and bad, you know, is, is a realistic way to, to perceive life when we're, you know, because when we, if we have bad things happening in life, we're, like, zooming in, I'm like, oh, life is terrible, wait, 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 zoom back out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, it's not so bad, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome.
Thank you so much for sharing that. So before we go, could mm -hmm. you tell our listeners where they can find you online so that they can mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I'm most active on Facebook. So facebook.com slash M-L-E-W-U. And so I sometimes I post some affirmations there. And then I also um, update it with my uh, upcoming speaking engagements. Um, I'm going to be speaking this coming weekend. Uh, remember William Hung, the guy who did American Idol and <laughs> she makes, she makes. Uh, he invited me to be a speaker for one of his Toastmasters groups um, on Sunday. And then we have right after that, I have to go over to um, the NAMI San Gabriel Valley picnic. And I'm going to be emceeing that. And then um, at the end of this month, we have um, NAMI California invited me to share my story at their conference. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, so uh, my Facebook page, there's my Twitter and Instagram, which is um, at Emily W Speaks, S P E A K S. Um, I think that's about it. So Instagram and Twitter is Emily W Speaks, and then uh, my Facebook page that ends with uh, slash M L E W U. So thank you so much, Lynette, for having me. Emily, thank you so much for joining us and just sharing your story. I got so much out of this. This was like, it was such a really deep and touching story, and you had so many amazing examples i'm like yes you, you are definitely gifted for storytelling so i think speaking <laughs> is your calling thank you. <laughs> thank you thank you and everyone watching i hope you enjoyed this as much as i did because i most definitely enjoyed this <laughs> and i'll put information on um the youtube video as well as on my website so that you can reach out to her and support her and if you want to invite her to speak there she is her contact mm -hmm. so everyone until the next time take care <laughs>